Hello, Blake Root is here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I want to show you how to make these really awesome light rays in a photograph. I'm also going to kind of walk you through some of the steps that I took on taking this regular image, transforming it with some of my effects, and then really putting the icing on the cake with this nice kind of natural looking blowout effect that you can put on your images. I also have an action for you, and while I do want you to take me up on the download of this action, I want you to watch this first so you know exactly what's happening when your light rays are created in Photoshop. So let's talk about making some light rays here. Well, with this photograph, I was in Olympic National Park and I was shooting in a place called Mary Mirror Falls. And on the way out to Mary Mirror Falls, there is this beautiful tree that looks like it has seen so much life. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I stopped for a little while and I shot it. So this is the, the image straight out of camera. And this light rays thing is something I do as an added effect later. Now, I'm gonna show you how I do it here, but I'm also gonna give you an action. So you can go to my website and you can download the action. But don't just download the action without watching this video because I need you to understand why things are the way they are. And I also need to understand that Photoshop does something completely different than all other programs and plugins when it comes to light rays. It's got a lot of different possibilities and it can make it look really natural and really realistic. Whereas other programs, you can tell that someone put a light ray in the corner of the image. This will not look like that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I was thinking when I, when I edited this. I used the Zone System Express to do my condensed tones to get my tones just right. I also used it to get my colors and make those colors pop. I used this thing in there called Custom Radiance that just makes this thing just look beautiful. And then I added all my effects with palette effects to get the colors and the looks of the image that I really wanted. And there's one more thing that I wanted to do to take this a little bit further, but I don't do that until the end. Because when it, when it comes to special effects, I like to leave the special effects to the end of the photo. And what I want to do is I want to make these blowing light rays so it looks like light is just pouring through the outside of the canopy of this tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stamp of all of this by pressing Control, Shift, Alt, and E. And that's going to make a stamp again. As I said before, I'm giving you a, uh, an action on how to do this. So don't, you, yes, I want you to understand how it works, but don't feel like you have to just scatter around and follow me to a T, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I need to make a selection for just the highlights in this image. So I'm going to go up to select and I'm going to go to color range. Now the color range that I want to select is up here. You can do one of two things. You can press sampled colors and you can click on that area and increase your fuzziness for that area. Let's say it's not exactly a highlight or in my case, it's a highlight. So I can come down here to where it says highlights and I can get a really good custom range for all the highlights in my image. So I'm going to dial those down to just about the canopy of the tree up there and increase or decrease that fuzziness to get it just right. So I'll increase that just a little bit more just to really get all of the, the canopy of the tree up there and try not to get anything in the foreground. We can worry about that later. And I'll press OK. So it's going to make a racing ant selection all over my photograph. So there's a couple things I can do with this. Because I want this to be on its own layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask. And this mask is really, if I press Alt or Option and we look at it, is only a selection for the highlights, correct? But here's the deal. I need this mask to be a physical selection of pixels and not a mask selection of pixels. So I'm gonna take this mask, drag it down to the trash can, and when I go to delete it, it's gonna ask me, apply mask to layer before I'm removing? Yes. So now what we see here is that this is the actual pixel selection of our highlights and not a mask. This is very important. So now I'm gonna go up to filter and I'm gonna to go to blur and this is where I'm gonna create the light rays and I'm gonna to go to radial blur. So the radial blur I wanna see, you're not gonna see it actually happening here, which is kind of a downfall that happens in Photoshop, uh, whereas other programs you can see exactly where your light rays are gonna be. It might take some trial and error, okay? So we're gonna set this method to zoom, so that it, it, by default, I believe it's set to spin, but spin just looks like something psychedelic. Change it to zoom, so we get these blowing out rays. And this little area here is where you can move it. Let's say you wanted those rays to blow out from the bottom and up to the top, we could do that. However, we wanna put this in the direction to where the highlights are. So I'm gonna put it right here. Notice this is a square and not a rectangle. It makes it kind of difficult to see exactly where you're gonna be putting your radial blur. I know it's a pain in the butt, but 
it, it works out really well. So then we're gonna go to quality and make it best and press okay. Now I'm working on a low resolution image just for this tutorial so that you can see it happening rather quickly. However, if you're working on a big photograph, this radio blur might take a little while. So you've got a couple options. You could either make this a smart object beforehand. If it didn't quite work out right, you could double click that smart object and go into it. Or you could just go back into your history and then go and radio blur it again if it didn't get the good radio blur. But I think that's a beautiful radio blur. I mean, look at that. It looks awesome. Uh, it looks like it's really blowing out through that sky up there. But this is what sets Photoshop aside from many of the other programs and plugins that do light rays. I need to protect my shadow areas because I don't really want those shadow areas to have this blowout on them. It doesn't look natural. So if I double click right here on this layer too, it's gonna open up my blending options. Now down here, I've done many tutorials on blend if in the past. If we move this over, we can see exactly where the uh, high re highlight rays are not affecting our image. So if I move it over to about here, I can then press Alt or Option, and I can split and feather that over and get a nice good selection so that our darks kind of poke through that blowing out highlight to get a really natural looking uh, effect. And then I'll press, uh, I could press OK here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something else. If we change this right down here to color overlay and change this color overlay to a magenta color. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is it actually shows me exactly where these blowout rays are and where they're coming from. So that if I wanted to uh, paint them out, I could. So I can make a mask here and I could get a brush and brush with black, make it a big brush and just brush out some of these areas. It helps to see it in, in this magenta color a little bit better um, so that we can really see exactly where that is. And then if I don't want to see the magenta anymore, I want to see exactly what I have, just turn that off. This is really that, that overlay is just a way that we can see where the blowouts are so that we can get rid of it where it doesn't belong. A couple things you can do with this. At this point, you could press Command or Control J to duplicate it and really make it blow out even more. One of the things I like to do when it's like this is I blow out even more and then go to Filter, go to Blur, and then go to Gaussian Blur and Gaussian Blur the extra radial and we can get a really cool kind of effect in our image. Of course, if it's too much, you can always drop that opacity a little bit more or go in and protect more things on this one with some of those darker areas so that they shine through and it looks like a, a nice natural uh, highlight blowout. Um, let me go and turn that off, turn it on, turn this off, turn it on, and you see the different effect. So if I were to put these into their own group by pressing Command or Control G, here's the overall before, after all my edits, and here's the after, after that nice natural blowout. I think this one might be a little too much, so I'll go ahead and delete that one, just giving you some options. So as I said before, if we open up our actions, here is the Light Rays F64 Academy. You can click on the Light Rays, press play, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna stop and ask you what your highlights are. You can press okay, and then you say where you want the blur to be, and press okay, and now you have your Light Rays blurred through with that action automatically. And it has the overlay effect here so that you can brush out where you need to brush out with that mask if you so choose to. Turn that effect off so we don't see the, the magenta there and we got a nice natural looking effect. I'm gonna turn that one off underneath and this is the one that's in the action. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. Light rays are cool. They can add a nice special effect to your image, but be sure to use them subtly. Don't over-exaggerate them. Drop that opacity. Protect some of those black areas so that you don't just have an image that looks like someone put a, a, a spot somewhere, like a light ray spot somewhere. The other thing is not every image deserves to have this kind of light ray blowout effect. This tree, that canopy was begging to have something up there, so I put it up there. Does that mean that every image of every tree that you ever take is gonna need light rays? No. So you can just use this as a way to exaggerate your artistic expression and get beautiful artistic looking light rays in your images. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Please go to f64academy.com. If you're on YouTube, there's gonna be a description below to download this action. Like this video, share it, tell a friend and spread it around, all right? Thanks again and have a great day.